Hey everybody, uh, you may have seen in the iOS 13 update, uh, Apple's released support for light and dark mode now. And so basically what this means is if you have dark mode enabled, you're gonna get a generally darker UI with sort of black and gray backgrounds, and the light sort of UI will have white, uh, black on white sort of thing. And we've sort of talked about a similar concept in the past with creating a theme switcher service in Ionic 4, which is uh, really simple because of the fact that Ionic 4 uses CSS variables now. So basically at runtime, we can just switch those theme variables out, which are defined with CSS4 variables. And then the styling is just going to instantly change in our application. Now, the interesting thing about uh, this iOS 13 update is that uh, it's not just a matter of the user selecting in the application what uh, style or theme they prefer. Uh, it's a setting they can have natively on their phone and we can actually listen and detect that and then automatically display our application with either a dark or a light theme depending on their preference. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to walk through implementing that and in general just creating a nice all-round solution that's going to uh, listen for that uh, preference from the user and automatically set the theme. Uh, and we're also going to add a way to manually change the theme inside the application as well. And so most of what we're gonna be covering in this video is uh, more or less what is covered in this documentation here. Uh, there's a really good uh, guide about dark mode, which I think was written by uh, Brandy from the Ionic team. So if you've got some time, I'd recommend having a look through this and reading the various uh, sort of aspects about dark mode and some things to consider. Uh, we're just going to jump into creating a good all-round solution and we're going to do that inside of an ionic and stencil application but as is usually the case with these kinds of things it doesn't really matter if you're using angular or something else um, the general concepts are going to be the same you just might need to change things a little bit uh, depending on which framework you are using now before we jump into the code example i have uh, it's worth mentioning this media query here uh, prefers color scheme so you can use this to detect which color scheme the user prefers. So that's gonna be what they have set uh, in their settings. And we could detect that it is uh, dark, for example. And then we could apply some specific CSS4 variables uh, in response to that. Now, the problem with this is it isn't universally supported. So we're actually going to be using a different uh, method and essentially just manually adding a dark class in our application. And that's described in here as well. Uh, the problem with uh, using this is that uh, if you do want to use this, then you're going to have to have a CSS fallback anyway. So you're going to end up duplicating your styles and have your variables defined in two places, which isn't very nice. So uh, we're going to go with an approach that will allow you to just have one set of uh, variables listed for the theme, and that will just work uh, universally. So let's jump into the example, and it's, uh, it's reasonably simple, I think, for such a sort of cool feature. Uh, there isn't all that much code involved. So I'll just open up the project here and where we're gonna start is in the app.css file. This is for a stencil and Ionic application. Uh, if you're doing this in an Angular application, this is gonna be a different file. It's more or less the exact same code. Uh, it'll look exactly like this, but I think it's in the, um, uh, the variables file in Angular. Uh, basically, you just want your global CSS or SCSS file. And what we're going to do is define some dark colors on body.dark. And so what this means is basically that if our body tag in our HTML has the dark class, it's going to apply all of these CSS variables here. Uh, if you don't uh, already understand CSS variables and uh, specifically Ionic's usage of CSS variables, I'll link to uh, some additional resources on that. And so basically you just define your theme however you want it to be in dark mode here. Uh, we're actually using an example from the Ionic documentation so if you scroll down the bottom here, they have their own sort of ionic dark theme that you can use. And so we have some just general uh, styles here. And then as well as that, we have uh, some specific styles and CSS variables for iOS. So these are only going to apply when the dark theme is on, on iOS. And then we have some uh, material design or Android specific uh, variables as well. So basically with these variables defined, uh, they're going to apply that dark theme if the body tag has the dark class. So since I already have these variables in here now, 
And to make it easy to copy and paste for you, I'd recommend just going to the Ionic Framework documentation here, uh, looking at this dark theme inside of the dark mode documentation and just copy and paste uh, this section into your app. And once you have that, you should be able to uh, launch your application in the browser and you'll be able to see how this works. So I've added some additional code that we're going to talk through in a minute. Uh, but at this stage, basically what you should be able to do is um, open up your inspector here, uh, do some debugging. And what we want to do basically is you can see uh, since I've got this set to Galaxy S5 now, I might actually just change this to iPhone uh, 10 because we're, we're talking about iOS 13 here. Uh, so if you look at the very top HTML tag here, you can see this has uh, the iOS class uh, attached to it. And if we go back into our code here, you can see we have this iOS selector. So this is saying uh, we want to apply these variables to uh, any body tag that has the dark class and is also inside of something else that has the class iOS. So we can see here the HTML tag has the iOS class and that is containing the body here, which at the moment doesn't have a dark class on it. However, what we can do, if we just uh, edit this manually, I'll just add class equals dark to it. And then that instantly updates that theme there to use those dark values. So the general idea behind what we're going to do here is just attach the dark class to the body when that is the user's preference. And so that is either going to come through the native settings on iOS 13, whether they have light, uh, light mode or dark mode as set in their appearance settings, or if they manually click one of these dark theme or light theme buttons uh, within our application, which is going to uh, overwrite that uh, native preference. So let's jump back into the code again. And so what we're going to do here is just set up a little bit of code to handle doing that. And what we're going to do is create this enable dark theme helper function. And the whole purpose of this function is basically to just toggle that dark class uh, on and off on the body tag. So if we call this method with true, it's going to add the dark class to the body tag. If we call it with false, it is going to remove uh, the dark class from the body tag. So since this is a stencil JS application, I've just added this inside of the, the helpers utils uh, uh, file here. And so I'm just exporting a function and then I can then import that function elsewhere. Uh, if you're using something else, you might do this a bit differently. In Angular, for example, you would probably just create a service, uh, an injectable service, and then provide a method similar to this in there. So now that we have that enable dark theme method, we just need to use it at some point. And so what we're going to do is in our root component here, we're going to check for that preference and then add that, um, add that dark class if necessary. So what I'm doing here is I've imported that enable dark theme uh, function that I just created. Again, if you're using Angular, you might import this from a service and inject it through your constructor. And then what we're doing is using component will load, which is going to run uh, when the application is loading. In Angular, you would use something like ng on init. And basically what we do here is we check if they prefer the dark theme by checking for the prefers color scheme dark preference there. And so that's going to return us a Boolean value. So if they do have that preference set, it's going to return true. And then we just call our enable dark theme with whatever that preference was, whether it was true or false. And that's going to either set that dark class or remove it or rather just not add it. And another thing we need to do is listen for changes to that because the user might uh, change that preference uh, when they've already opened the application, in which case we're not going to be running this code again. So what we do is we add this listener here. And that's going to trigger any time that that value changes. And then we just again call enable dark theme with whatever the new value is. And so this is going to handle that automatic uh, preference for us. It will automatically set that dark class on the body tag if that is the user's preference according to uh, the native iOS um, setting. And so there's one more thing we're going to do here and that is adding a way to manually change that. Uh, and all I've done here is I've just added a couple of buttons inside of the home uh, page here. 
And again, I'm just importing that enable dark theme uh, function. Uh, and then I just have two buttons set up here, dark theme button and a light theme button. If they click on the dark theme button, it's going to call enable dark theme with true. If they click on the light theme uh, button, it's going to call enable dark theme with false. And so the end result here is that we can go into the browser here. It's going to refresh that to get rid of that manual class I added. And you can see that if we click on either of these uh, buttons now, it's going to toggle back and forth between dark theme and light theme, uh, depending on what we click. And so that's a good demonstration of how that sort of um, manual change works, but we can't really see the uh, automatic preference um, being used here. And so as far as I'm aware, I don't think Chrome DevTools has support for emulating that preference yet. I could be mistaken, uh, but I don't think they do, uh, but Safari does. So I don't typically uh, debug in Safari, but for this case, we're just gonna have a look. Let me just pull over my Safari browser now. Now we'll inspect element. Let me just uh, attach that as well. We'll attach it on the side. Uh, okay. So what we're going to do here basically is we can be click anywhere in the elements tab here. And they just have this little button here. If you hover over it, it says force dark appearance. If we click on that, we can see that it sets that dark theme. So we can see that that, that kind of automatic um, preference is happening. And if you keep an eye on the body tag here, you can see that dark class being removed uh, and added as we toggle this option. And also if I set dark mode, uh, and then manually click light theme, it's still going to override that with our own in-app preference. So this is a good way to sort of debug, see how your application looks in the browser, because generally when we're creating Ionic applications, that's where we want to do most of our development, but uh, it's a good idea to test this on the native device as well. Uh, so I have this installed on an iOS device, which has been updated with iOS 13. So what I'm going to do here is just record uh, do a little screen recording of that and I'll show you this working in an actual natively installed application. Okay, so if I just check my settings right now, this isn't actually my phone, it's my wife's phone, but uh, if we go into the settings, we can see we have the light mode enabled currently and if we open the app, we can see that the light mode is set. Uh, but if I change this to dark, you can see the you know, general iOS UI updates to dark. But if we switch back into our application, you can see that our app also gets that dark mode styling. And again, just to demonstrate, I'll switch back to light again, switch back to the app, and we get the light styling. And of course, you can still on here also to switch back and forth between the dark theme and the light theme just by clicking the buttons. Okay, so that is the basic idea behind uh, supporting dark mode in iOS 13, but also just implementing a general way to switch between light and dark themes within uh, the application. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, do feel free to leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.